I couldn't believe my ears. As I lingered in the hallway, the sound of my husband Marshall's voice carried through the partially open study door. His arrogant tone made my stomach turn. Yes, it's all falling into place, just as we planned. By the time I'm done, that dull life with Adrian will be a thing of the past. The money's already set aside, and Tessa and I will be long gone before that fool even realizes what hit her. My grip tightened around the stack of papers in my hands, so he was planning to leave me penniless, all while carrying on his affair with that conniving gold digger Tessa, the nerve of him. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. Adrian's been coasting for years, riding on my coattails. Well, not anymore. I'm done being her meal ticket. This divorce is going to leave her high and dry. She'll have nothing. The conversation made my blood boil. How dare he betray me like this? We had built a life together, raised a daughter, and now he was going to discard me without a second thought. Not if I had anything to say about it. I slipped away, my mind racing. I needed to act fast, gather evidence, and figure out a way to protect myself and our daughter Lainey from Marshall's heartless scheme. I couldn't let him get away with this. Later that evening, I found Lainey in her room, clearly distressed. Mom, are you okay? I heard you and Dad arguing earlier. I sat down beside her, squeezing her hand reassuringly. Lainey, sweetheart, I need to tell you something. I recounted what I had overheard, watching the color drain from her face. Her eyes welled with tears as the weight of Marshall's betrayal sank in. I can't believe Dad would do this to us. What are we going to do? I pulled her into a tight hug, feeling her body tremble. Don't worry, Lainey. We're going to fight this, together. I won't let him walk all over us. Your father has made a grave mistake, and he's going to pay for it. Lainey sniffled, looking up at me with a renewed sense of determination. What's our plan, Mom? First, we need to start gathering evidence. I want a full account of your father's finances, any suspicious transactions or hidden accounts, and see what you can find out about this Tessa woman he's involved with. We need to know everything. Lainey nodded, quickly wiping her tears away. Okay, I'm on it. We're going to make him regret ever trying to do this to us, right, Mom? I cupped her cheek, giving her a reassuring smile. Absolutely, sweetheart. I promise we're going to get through this. No matter what, I won't let him take everything from us. With that, Lainey and I set out to uncover the truth, determined to expose Marshall's betrayal and protect our family. I knew the road ahead would be difficult, but I was more resolute than ever. Marshall had made a grave mistake in underestimating me. The next morning I wasted no time. I needed to get ahead of Marshall's scheming, and the first step was enlisting help. I knew exactly who to turn to. My brother Derek, a sharp-witted attorney who had my back no matter what. I gave him a call, my voice shaking as I relayed the disturbing details I had overheard the previous night. Derek, I don't know what to do. Marshall is planning to leave me and Lainey with nothing. He's been funneling our money into secret accounts, all while carrying on an affair with that woman, Tessa, at his office. Derek's response was immediate. That snake. Don't worry, Adrian. We're going to make him regret ever trying to pull this off. I felt a weight lift from my shoulders, knowing I had my brother's unwavering support. I've already started gathering what information I can, but I need your help, Derek. I can't let him get away with this. You've got it. Bring me everything you've got, and we'll start building a case. I'll make sure that bastard doesn't see a dime of what's rightfully yours. Thank you, Derek. I don't know what I'd do without you. Hey, your family. I've got your back no matter what. We'll take Marshall down, I promise. With that, I hung up and immediately got to work, scouring our financial records for any suspicious activity. Lainey was right by my side, diligently investigating Marshall's dealings with Tessa. As the days passed, the evidence against Marshall mounted. Derek poured over the documents, his brow furrowed in concentration. This is worse than I thought. Marshall has been systematically draining our accounts and funneling the money into investments under Tessa's name. The sneaky bastard is trying to declare bankruptcy to avoid paying you a dime in the divorce. I clenched my fists, rage bubbling inside me. He can't get away with this. We have to stop him. Derek nodded, his expression hardening. Don't worry, we will. I'll file for divorce, and we'll demand a full accounting of his assets. We'll make sure you get what's rightfully yours. 
Laney, who had been quietly listening, spoke up. What about Tessa? Can we do something about her, too? Derek gave her a reassuring smile. Absolutely. We'll make sure she pays for her part in all of this. Marshall may have been the one pulling the strings, but she's just as guilty. I felt a surge of pride at my daughter's determination. That's my girl. We're going to show them both that they can't mess with the Shaw women. As the legal proceedings began, Marshall's desperation became increasingly evident. He tried to sweet-talk me, begging for forgiveness and a second chance, but I wasn't having it. I saw the fear in his eyes as the walls closed in around him. Please, Adrian, I made a mistake. Can't we work this out? I scoffed, my voice dripping with contempt. A mistake? You planned this whole thing, you lying bastard. You didn't even have the decency to come clean. No, Marshall, this is far beyond any second chances. You're going to pay for what you've done. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving him to stew in his own guilt and regret. I had my family by my side, and together, we were going to make sure Marshall's betrayal didn't go unpunished. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of legal battles and strategy sessions with Derek. Marshall had proven himself to be a master manipulator, and we had to tread carefully to uncover the full extent of his deceitfulness. "'This guy is slippery,' Derek muttered, poring over the latest financial documents we had obtained. He's been funneling money into all sorts of shady investments and accounts, all while trying to position Tessa as the primary beneficiary. I clenched my fists, my jaw tightening. Unbelievable, so he's trying to leave me with nothing, even in the divorce? Derek nodded grimly. That seems to be the plan, but we're not going to let him get away with it. Laney, who had been sitting quietly beside me, finally spoke up. What can we do? We have to stop him before he takes everything. Derek leaned back in his chair, a determined glint in his eyes. Don't worry, Laney. We've got plenty of ammunition. We're going to expose every single one of Marshall's underhanded schemes, and we're going to make sure you and your mom get what's rightfully yours. I felt a surge of pride and relief, knowing that I had such a formidable ally in my corner. So what's the plan? First, we're going to file for divorce on your behalf. We'll demand a full accounting of all of Marshall's assets, including the ones he's tried to hide. Then, we're going to systematically uncover every penny he's funneled away, and we're going to make sure it all comes back to you. Laney's eyes widened, a glimmer of hope sparking in her gaze. And what about Tessa? Can we do something about her, too? Derek's lips curled into a wry smile. Oh, don't worry. We're going to make sure she pays for her part in all of this. We're going to expose her as the greedy, manipulative gold digger that she is. I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction at the thought of Tessa's downfall. Good. She deserves to lose everything just as much as Marshall does. As the divorce proceedings began, Marshall's desperation became increasingly apparent. He tried to sweet-talk me, begging for forgiveness and a second chance, but I wasn't having any of it. Please, Adrian, let's talk about this. I know I made a mistake— but can't we work something out? I leveled him with a steely gaze, my voice dripping with contempt. A mistake? You planned this whole thing, you lying bastard. You didn't even have the decency to come clean. No, Marshall, this is far beyond any second chances. You're going to pay for what you've done. Marshall's face contorted with a mix of fear and resentment. You won't get away with this, Adrian. I'll make sure you and that brat of a daughter of ours end up with nothing. I scoffed, refusing to be cowed by his empty threats. We'll see about that, Marshall. You've already underestimated me once, and that was your biggest mistake. As the legal battle raged on, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. With Derek by my side, I was determined to expose every single one of Marshall's underhanded schemes and ensure that justice was served. This was no longer just about protecting myself and Laney. It was about making sure that Marshall's betrayal didn't go unpunished. As the divorce proceedings wore on, it became increasingly clear that Marshall was growing desperate. His attempts to hide his assets and leave me destitute were unraveling, thanks to Derek's tireless efforts and the meticulous evidence we had gathered. But I wanted more than just a financial victory. I wanted to see Marshall's carefully crafted facade crumble before his eyes, and I knew just the opportunity to make that happen. The company's annual gala was coming up, and Marshall was expected to attend with Tessa on his arm 
showcasing their relationship to all of our friends and colleagues. It was the perfect moment to strike. Derek, I have an idea, I said, leaning forward in my chair. What if we use the gala to expose Marshall's betrayal? Derek's brow furrowed, but I could see the gears turning in his mind. I'm listening. We've gathered so much evidence against him, let's use that to publicly humiliate him and Tessa. Let's show everyone the kind of man he truly is. Lainey, who had been sitting quietly beside me, suddenly perked up. I love it, Mom. Let's make him pay for what he's done. Derek nodded, a determined glint in his eye. All right, let's do it. We'll make sure every one of his clients and colleagues sees exactly what kind of scum he is. And so we set our plan in motion. The night of the gala, I steeled my nerves, knowing that the time had come to confront Marshall and Tessa. As they arrived, arm in arm and basking in the attention, I made my move. Attention, everyone, I called out, my voice carrying across the room. I have something I'd like to share with all of you. The crowd turned to face me, murmurs of curiosity rippling through the room. Marshall's face paled, his eyes widening with a mix of fear and fury. For the past several months, my husband, Marshall Shaw, has been carrying on an affair with his co-worker, Tessa. I paused, letting the words sink in. And not only that, but he's been systematically siphoning our family's assets into hidden accounts, all in an attempt to leave me and our daughter destitute. Gasps of shock and outrage filled the air as I continued, my gaze never wavering from Marshall's. I have the evidence to prove it all. Bank statements, financial records, and even email correspondence between the two of them. Marshall Shaw is a liar and a thief, and he's been using all of you to maintain his facade of respectability. Tessa's face crumpled, her carefully crafted image of sophistication and poise shattered. Marshall, on the other hand, seethed with barely contained rage. You bitch! He spat, lunging towards me. How dare you humiliate me like this? But before he could reach me, two security guards stepped in, restraining him. The crowd erupted in a chorus of outrage and disbelief, turning their once-admiring gaze upon the man they had once respected. In the midst of the chaos, I caught Tessa's eye. Her expression was one of pure betrayal, her dreams of luxury and leisure reduced to ashes. I couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of satisfaction. This isn't over, Adrian, Marshall bellowed, his voice laced with desperation. You'll pay for this. I simply shook my head, unwavering in my resolve. No, Marshall, this is just the beginning. You're going to pay for your betrayal, every single bit of it. With that, I turned and walked away, leaving him to face the consequences of his actions. The tables had turned, and I was no longer the victim. I was the victor. The fallout from my public exposure of Marshall's betrayal was swift and severe. Within days, the news had spread like wildfire, and his professional and social standing crumbled before his eyes. My clients are dropping me left and right, he fumed during one of our heated phone calls. How dare you drag my name through the mud like this? I couldn't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction at his desperation. You brought this on yourself, Marshall. You thought you could deceive me and get away with it, but you were wrong. This isn't over, Adrienne. I'll make you regret the day you crossed me. Go ahead and try, Marshall, but I have the evidence, and I'm coming for everything you've tried to take from me and Laney. With that, I hung up, my resolve only strengthening. Derek had wasted no time in filing for divorce on my behalf, and we were demanding a substantial portion of the marital assets, including the ones Marshall had tried to hide. As the legal battle intensified, I was overwhelmed by the outpouring of support from our friends and community. Many of them had been misled by Marshall's facade, and they were eager to see him face the consequences of his actions. Adrian, I can't believe what that bastard has done, my friend Sarah said, her eyes brimming with sympathy. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I squeezed her hand gratefully. Thank you, Sarah. Just knowing that I have your support means the world to me. Lainey, too, had found solace in the kindness of our loved ones. Mom, everyone's been so amazing. They all hate Dad for what he's done to us. I pulled her into a tight hug, relishing the strength of our bond. I know, sweetheart. We're not alone in this, and that's what's going to help us get through it. As the court proceedings dragged on, Marshall's desperation only grew more palpable. He tried every tactic he could to stall the proceedings, but Derek was relentless, 
meticulously presenting the evidence we had gathered. Finally, the day of the verdict arrived. I sat in the courtroom, my heart pounding, as the judge delivered his ruling. After carefully considering the evidence presented, the court finds that the defendant, Marshall Shaw, has engaged in a pattern of financial deceit and adultery. As a result, the plaintiff, Adrian Shaw, is awarded a significant portion of the marital assets as well as full custody of their minor child, Lainey Shaw. The courtroom erupted in a murmur of approval, and I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. We had won. Marshall's face contorted with rage and humiliation, but I refused to let him see my satisfaction. This isn't over, Adrian, he growled through gritted teeth. I'll find a way to get back at you for this. I leveled him with a steely gaze, unflinching. Save your empty threats, Marshall. You've already lost, and the only thing you have left is your pride. Enjoy your defeat, because it's only the beginning. As we left the courtroom, Laney and I exchanged a triumphant glance. We had weathered the storm and emerged stronger than ever. Marshall's betrayal had only served to forge an unbreakable bond between us, and I knew that no matter what he tried, we would always have each other. The day of the final divorce hearing arrived, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of nervous anticipation. After months of painstaking legal battles, the moment of truth had finally come. Marshall would have to face the consequences of his betrayal, and I was determined to make sure he paid dearly for his transgressions. As we entered the courtroom, I could feel the tension in the air. Marshall's eyes were hard and unyielding, his jaw set in a stubborn line. Tessa, who had been by his side throughout the proceedings, looked equally defiant, her brow furrowed with a mixture of fear and resentment. Derek gave my hand a reassuring squeeze as we took our seats. Don't worry, Adrian. We've got this. Everything is going to be okay. I nodded, taking a deep breath to steady my nerves. I knew that Derek was right. We had built an airtight case, and the evidence against Marshall was overwhelming. When the judge called the proceedings to order, I felt a surge of adrenaline. Derek stood up, his voice clear and unwavering as he presented our case. Your Honor, the evidence clearly shows that the defendant, Marshall Shaw, has engaged in a calculated effort to deprive the plaintiff, Adrian Shaw, and their minor child, Lainey Shaw, of their rightful assets. Through a complex web of hidden accounts, investments, and financial maneuvers, Mr. Shaw has attempted to leave his family destitute and without the means to support themselves. Marshall's face contorted with a mix of anger and desperation as Derek laid out the details of his schemes. Tessa, beside him, shifted uncomfortably in her seat, her eyes darting around the courtroom. Furthermore, Your Honor, the defendant has carried on an extramarital affair with his co-worker, Miss Tessa Anderson, while simultaneously planning to leave his wife and child with nothing. This is a clear breach of the marital vows, and the plaintiff is entitled to a substantial portion of the marital assets as a result. As Derek continued to methodically dismantle Marshall's defense, I could feel the tide turning in our favor. The judge, a stern-faced man with a reputation for fairness, listened intently, his brow furrowing with each new revelation. When it came time for Marshall to present his case, he seemed uncharacteristically flustered. His voice trembled as he tried to defend his actions, but the weight of the evidence against him was simply too much to bear. Your Honor, this is all a misunderstanding. I never intended to leave my family destitute. The money was meant for us, for a fresh start. Adrian just doesn't understand the sacrifices I've had to make for this family. The judge cut him off, his voice laced with disdain. The only sacrifice I see here, Mr. Shaw, is the one your family has had to make due to your selfish and deceitful actions. The evidence presented is damning, and I see no reason to rule in your favor. With those words, the courtroom erupted in a chorus of murmurs and scattered applause. Marshall's face was a mask of pure anguish, while Tessa sat beside him, her eyes downcast and her shoulders slumped. When the judge delivered his final ruling, awarding me a substantial portion of the marital assets and granting me full custody of Laney, I felt a sense of vindication wash over me. Marshall had been humbled, his carefully crafted facade shattered beyond repair. As we left the courtroom, Laney wrapped her arms around me, her eyes shining with pride. We did it, Mom. We showed him that he can't mess with us. I nodded, a smile spreading across my face. 
Yes, sweetheart, we did it. And now, it's time to start a new chapter. In the weeks following the court's decisive ruling, Marshall's life began to unravel before his eyes. With his professional reputation in tatters and the vast majority of his assets awarded to me and Laney, he was left scrambling to pick up the pieces. I couldn't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction as I watched his once polished facade crumble. The man who had once exuded confidence and power was now a shadow of his former self, reduced to a desperate, broken individual. One day, as Laney and I were settling into our new home, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was met with the sight of a haggard-looking marshal, his eyes pleading for mercy. Adrienne, please, we need to talk. I hesitated for a moment, unsure of whether I should even entertain his request. But something in his demeanor gave me pause, and I stepped aside, allowing him to enter. Laney, who had been watching from the living room, quickly joined us, her expression guarded. What do you want, Dad? Marshall's gaze swept across our faces, and I could see the weight of his defeat etched in every line of his weary features. I... I just want to apologize. For everything. I felt a surge of anger coursing through me, but I forced myself to remain calm. Apologize? After everything you've done to us, you think a simple apology is going to make it right? He hung his head, his voice barely above a whisper. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness. What I did was unforgivable. But I'm begging you, please, let me make it up to you. To both of you. Laney's eyes narrowed, her lips pressed into a thin line. Make it up to us? How, Dad? By leaving us destitute and trying to take everything from us? We don't want your apologies or your promises. We just want you to leave us alone. Marshall's face crumpled, and I could see the tears welling in his eyes. I was so wrong, Laney. I let my own selfish desires blind me to what was truly important. You and your mother, you're the only ones who matter to me. Please, just give me one more chance. I felt a pang of pity, despite my better judgment. There was a desperation in his voice that I couldn't ignore. A vulnerability that I hadn't seen in him for a very long time. But the memory of his betrayal was still too fresh, the wounds too deep to simply forgive and forget. No, Marshal. You had your chance, and you threw it away. We're done. He reached out, his hand trembling. Adrian, please. I'm begging you. I'll do anything. Just anything? I cut him off, my voice sharp. There's nothing you can do to make this right. You've lost, Marshall, and the only thing you have left is to accept it. With that, I stepped back, closing the door in his face. Laney and I stood there in silence for a moment, the weight of the moment heavy in the air. Mom, are you sure about this? Laney asked, her brow furrowed with concern. I nodded, my resolve unwavering. Yes, sweetheart, we've come too far to let him back in. It's time for us to move on, without him. Laney's lips curled into a small, determined smile. Okay, Mom, I'm with you, no matter what. As I embraced my daughter, I knew that we had emerged from this ordeal stronger and more resilient than ever before. Marshall's desperate attempts at reconciliation only served to remind me of the strength I had found within myself and the unbreakable bond I shared with Laney. We were ready to start a new chapter, one that didn't involve him. In the months following the divorce, Laney and I embraced our newfound freedom and independence. With the substantial settlement I had been awarded, I was able to start a new business, channeling my passion and expertise into a venture that was entirely my own. Watching Laney thrive in her schoolwork and extracurricular activities, free from the shadow of her father's betrayal, filled me with a sense of pride and relief. Her future was no longer tainted by Marshall's deceitful actions, and she was blossoming into a confident, compassionate young woman. As for Marshall, he continued to make sporadic attempts to reach out, but I remained steadfast in my decision to cut ties. His calls and messages went unanswered and I refused to allow him back into our lives. Laney and I had worked too hard to rebuild what he had tried to destroy. One afternoon, as I was reviewing the latest financials for my budding business, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was surprised to find Derek standing on my doorstep, a triumphant grin on his face. Adrienne, I've got some good news. I ushered him inside, a sense of cautious optimism growing within me. What is it, Derek? I just got off the phone with the judge. He's approved the final divorce settlement, and it's even better than we'd hoped. You're officially free and clear of Marshall, 
and you've got enough assets to secure your and Laney's financial future. A weight lifted from my shoulders, and I found myself unable to hold back a relieved laugh. That's incredible, Derek. I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done. He waved off my gratitude with a warm smile. Don't worry about it, sis. You and Laney are family, and I'll always have your back. Now, why don't you tell me more about this new business of yours? I want to hear all about it. As I shared the details of my venture, I couldn't help but feel a sense of renewed purpose. The pain and turmoil of the past year had only served to strength strengthen my resolve, and I was more determined than ever to build a life on my own terms. Laney, who had been listening intently, chimed in with excitement. Mom, this is amazing. I'm so proud of you. And just think, we'll never have to worry about Dad trying to take anything away from us ever again. I pulled her into a tight hug, savoring the moment. That's right, sweetheart. We're free, and we're going to make the most of it. In the weeks that followed, I threw myself into the work of building my business, finding a sense of fulfillment and purpose that I hadn't experienced in a long time. Lainey, too, flourished, her academic achievements and extracurricular involvement a testament to her resilience and determination. As for Marshall, his attempts to reconnect with us dwindled, his calls going unanswered as Lainey and I embraced our new life. I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure, knowing that the weight of his betrayal no longer hovered over us. One evening, as Lainey and I sat together on the porch, gazing out at the setting sun, she turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Mom, do you ever think about what would have happened if we just let Dad get away with everything? I reached out and squeezed her hand, giving her a reassuring smile. Honestly, sweetheart, I try not to think about that. All that matters now is that we're here, together, and we're stronger than ever. Lainey nodded, her own smile widening. You're right, Mom. We did it. We survived, and we're going to keep on thriving. I'm so proud of you. As we embraced, I felt a profound sense of gratitude and love for my daughter, the unwavering bond between us, a testament to the power of family and the strength that can be found in adversity. Whatever the future held, I knew that Lainey and I would face it side by side, our resilience and determination unbreakable.